Here's a question for you. If you were going to invest now in your future self, what would you focus on? One of the world's longest health studies sought to find the answer to that question. The Harvard study of adult development began way back in 1938. It followed two sets of young men. Some were from the inner city Boston and others were those who studied at Harvard. One of the Harvard men was a young John F. Kennedy. Their lives gave researchers evidence that our relationships with others keep us happy and healthy. Dr. Robert Waldinger is a fourth director of the study, which continues tracking the roughly 60 surviving members. Good morning to you. Good morning. This is so fascinating to me because when you when you all started way back the, when, 75 years ago, it started as adult development, and then you wanted to look at happiness. Why? What we realized was that we had an amazing resource. We could look at their health their relationships, their work lives, and all of that added up to how happy they were in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so we started looking at the whole package, and we've done that over 75 years. But it's interesting, though, what you were studying, though. You were looking at the size of their skulls, the shape and size, at one point the scrotum and hanging lengths. I don't know what that has to do with happiness. Yes. But you looked at many different things to determine what makes a man happy. Well, the things we think are important change so much over time, and in the 1930s, they thought that some of those things made a big difference yeah. in who you were, what your personality was like, what yeah. your happiness levels were. Turns out they don't make much of a difference, yeah. and now we study very different things. And the yes. truth is what? What leads to happiness? Our men found that good, close relationships predicted not just that they would stay happier, but that they would stay physically healthier. And that's the amazing thing. Mm -hmm. This is as important or even more important than, say, avoiding cigarettes, drinking too much? As important. As mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. uh, because the chronic stress of being lonely, of being unhappy, mm -hmm. gets into the body and breaks it down over time. I've heard you say people talk about leaning into work, but really we should be talking about leaning into our relationships. And by that, you mean what? How do we do that? Well, one way, as a Zen teacher, uh, I think a lot about the importance of how we pay attention. Because if you think about it, giving people our full undivided attention is probably the most valuable thing we have to offer. But it's really hard to do. Mm -hmm. Our attention is always being pulled away and fragmented. and these electronic devices that we're so attached to, uh, they're, they're hijacking our attention. But we can look at this in each moment mm -hmm. and noticing whether we're giving our full attention to the important people in our lives over time can really make a difference in those relationships. You found that look, looking at relationships of, of men with their mothers was really important, but also something I found really interesting was you, it was also about siblings as well, and that's something not a lot of people have looked at. Yes, we found that having a close relationship with even one of your siblings made a big difference in your happiness level across adulthood. Why is but back that? Up, but what about the mothers? Yeah. Well, it turns why the siblings and certainly why the mothers? We spend a lot more time with our siblings than most of us think about. Than anybody else on earth. Exactly. Yeah. Anybody, exactly. The, your sibling has known you longer than anybody you will mm -hmm. ever meet right. in your life. Exactly. And those are some of the earliest training grounds for how we are in relationships yeah. with each other. Mm -hmm. Is it about is it about the number of relationships or the or about the quality and depth of these relationships? It's not the number of Facebook friends you have. Yes, it is the quality and the depth of relationships that matters. You are um, a Zen priest. Yes. What advice do you have for identifying and cultivating these close relationships that you say are so key to our lifelong happiness? Simply watch what you're doing each day and who you're with and seeing if you can pay more and more careful attention to the people you're with. Mm -hmm. put, a, put aside all your preconceptions and just be there with somebody. It makes a huge difference. Now this mm -hmm. study was exclusively on men. What about women? Don't we want to be happy? <laughs> I'll go first. Nora and I want to be happy. Yes. <laughs> so and does uh, Patty. She wants to be happy too. Because of that, we're studying the second generation. We're studying the almost 2,000 children mm -hmm. of these men we oh, followed for 75 years. The children are all baby boomers. They're all in their 50s, 60s, 70s. Mm -hmm. And we're studying what their childhoods were like and how that predicts what their aging is going to be like. Because it turns out but if you grew up in a particularly stressful environment, yes. your health breaks down sooner. And so what we're going to be able to do is figure out how that works mm -hmm. and whether there are particular ways that we can help people 
who are struggling with difficult childhoods. Well, I'm thinking you're very happy today because you bought Mrs. Waldinger with you, and it's your no. wedding anniversary. Waldinger. Waldinger. Right? No, it's Waldinger. Waldinger. Okay. It rhymes with humdinger. Yes. <laughs> yes. So how long have you two been married, you two crazy kids? 30 years yesterday. All wow. Right. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's so great. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you Doctor. Doctor, thank you so much.